The Aerospace Line Super Guppy is a massive, one-of-a-kind aircraft capable of carrying oversized cargo safely across the globe when no other plane was up to the task. Described as a soaring whale, the original iteration of the peculiar-looking plane was fitted with a special balloon cargo hold with a 25-foot diameter, making it ideal to accomplish the missions it was designed for, the secure transportation of NASA space vehicles and equipment. During the height of its career in the late 60s and early 70s, the airborne Leviathan became a vital part of NASA, as it was the only aircraft in the world capable of transporting the entire third stage of the Saturn V rocket. The aircraft performed this essential role several times during the Apollo program and helped propel American space exploration into a new age of discovery. But as the colossal vehicle became more successful, it also gained the attention of other factions across the globe, and its latest iteration continues to prove it's here to stay continuing the astonishing story of an actor turned aviation entrepreneur that came up with a brilliant idea 60 years ago. A Massive Conundrum During the 1960s, the United States was involved in a brutal arms and space race against the Soviet Union. The Soviets had beaten the U.S. on the first stages of the space race, as they had launched the first satellite and sent the first human cosmonaut to space. If the U.S. didn't step up its game, it would be evident to the world that the USSR had surpassed America technologically. The U.S. space program was young, and still experiencing many issues that crippled its progress toward putting a man in orbit and eventually putting a man on the moon. One of the main obstacles was logistics. Most of the rockets being designed and developed for NASA were being built in California, while testing and launches were executed in Florida, a whole continent apart. Initially, the solution was to transport the rocket stages in great oversized barges that traveled south all the way to the Panama Canal and then north again to reach Florida. Suffice to say that the process was excruciatingly long and frustrating, often adding several weeks to the launching schedules programmed by NASA. The idea of delivering rocket sections through the air was an ideal solution. However, even though there were already plenty of cargo planes capable of carrying massive amounts of weight, the rockets designed by NASA were not particularly heavy, but they were overwhelmingly large. The Precursor The option of transporting oversized cargo outside of a giant airlifter was considered. Still, it was deemed too risky to carry the highly delicate and expensive NASA equipment outside a plane where it would be exposed to the elements and to unfortunate incidents that could abruptly set U.S. space efforts back a couple of years. A cargo plane capable of hauling incredible voluminous cargo inside its fuselage was desperately needed, which called for an entirely new and ingenious design. Fortunately, a new aircraft with the widest cargo holds ever built finally solved the problem in 1962. The aircraft was almost 20 feet in diameter, and because of its incredible potential, significant NASA components could now reach Florida in 18 hours instead of 18 days. Officially named KC-97 Stratotanker, it was dubbed the Pregnant Guppy, and it became the first in a long line of Guppy aircraft that would be built over the years to transport every groundbreaking NASA rocket from its developing location to its launching site. The man behind the Pregnant Guppy was actor and aviator Jack Conroy a retired U.S. Air Force pilot who pitched the idea to NASA. John Bacallier, lead manager for the Super Guppy at NASA, recalls, quote, When he showed a concept of what the plane would look like to NASA management at the time, they responded, that looks like a pregnant guppy, and the name stuck. The pregnant guppy was a modified version of a Boeing 377 Stratocruiser, one of the first airliners made by a legendary aircraft manufacturer. In turn, the Strato Cruiser was derived from a World War II bomber, the B-29 Superfortress. After getting NASA's attention, Jack Conroy formed a company, Aerospace Lines, to develop and operate the aircraft, which ended up being 16 feet longer than the Boeing 377, and the only airlifter in the world capable of carrying the upper stage of a Saturn rocket for the Apollo program. The Super Guppy As revolutionary as the pregnant guppy was in its ability to allow NASA to transport large space equipment in record time, it still had many shortcomings that prevented it from becoming the ideal oversized cargo transporter that NASA required. Many of these weaknesses stemmed from the fact that the aircraft had been modified from an airliner, and the structure of the original plane remained intact, limiting the capacity and practicality of the pregnant guppy to accomplish its new goals. 
to address the issue presented by the pregnant guppy and continue with its success, Aerospace Lines followed up with an even larger version of the aircraft in 1965. Nicknamed the Super Guppy, it was equipped with a 25-foot diameter cargo bay, more potent engines, and a pressurized cockpit. One of the main advantages of the new Guppy iteration over its predecessor was the addition of a hinged nose that made loading cargo a much more straightforward endeavor. Due to its structural characteristics, the pregnant Guppy had to be loaded from the back, which drastically reduced the size of objects being loaded, and also took up a significant portion of the back that could not have been used to carry freight. In contrast, the Super Guppy's nose could open up by using an array of heavy-duty hinges, which allowed for a more effective loading process and much better use of the space designated for cargo. Aerospace Lines continued to work for NASA while remaining the owner and primary operator of the Guppy aircraft until 1979, when the company sold the cargo planes to NASA and the agency took complete control of the fleet. Throughout its distinguished 32 years of service, the original Super Guppy flew over 3 million miles, providing vital assistance to NASA's Apollo, Gemini, Skylab, and International Space Station programs. A new iteration. The Super Guppy eventually underwent another significant modification, in which its four Pratt & Whitney T-34 P7WA turboprop engines were replaced with much more powerful Allison 501D22C turboprop engines. The new iteration was dubbed the Super Guppy Turbine, and besides the propulsion system update, the cargo hold area was redesigned from scratch, completely eradicating all the shortcomings that came from being a modified airliner and allowing even more freight space to carry more voluminous cargo. Despite the cargo hold being developed from scratch, the rest of the aircraft was still a mashup, with cockpit, wings, and tail borrowed from a 377, while the nose belonged to a Boeing 707. Also, the engine system was taken from a Lockheed P-3 Orion anti-submarine aircraft, and the propellers from the old C-130 Hercules airlifter. The turbine version would become the last generation of Guppy aircraft ever produced, with only four ever made. Now in the hands of the European Airbus Corporation, the Super Guppy turbines were used to transport huge A300 fuselage sections throughout Europe during the 70s, 80s, and 90s. When Airbus retired the four guppies in 1997, NASA acquired Super Guppy Turbine No. 4 to replace the aging original Super Guppy under an International Space Station trade deal with the European Space Alliance. To this day, NASA's Super Guppy Turbine continues to support America's space program. However, it is no longer the only solution to transport significant space components across large distances, with numerous oversized cargo planes taking that role over the last four decades. Interestingly, even after decades of being developed, the Super Guppy Turbine's capabilities have attracted the attention of other governmental and international factions, and many agencies around the globe have expressed interest in using the giant cargo plane for their own industrial ventures. Recently, the Guppy has been utilized by the Department of Defense and government contractors to relocate large aircraft components around the continent, including T-38s for the Air Force and B-22s for the U.S. Navy. Despite having 60-year-old pieces attached to its fuselage, NASA still considers their only Super Guppy left a valuable asset for the space agency. However, maintaining such an ancient piece of technology is not a simple task, as Bacallier describes, quote, If something breaks, you can't just go order a replacement, because no one has been making it for 50 or 60 years. Still, he is quick to point out that the sacrifice is worth it. Quote, it's a unique airplane, it kind of has an awkwardness about it, but knowing what it's able to do, and its unique ability to continue to perform that role, it wins people over. According to Bacallier, there is currently no plan for NASA to replace the colossal cargo plane. Instead, they're focusing on developing better and more efficient ways of maintaining it. And even though the glory days of the Guppy lay behind it, it continues to be one of the only feasible options to transport oversized cargo, and it stands ready to embrace a more prominent role in the future. Thank you for watching my video. Do you think NASA should continue to use the Super Guppy Turbine, or should they try to develop a new generation replacement? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to all of our Dark Documentaries channels for more history-inspired content published every day.